Hello and welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 179. Thanks for coming by. Today, we're going to talk about martial arts seminars and some of the things that I've picked up on how to teach at seminars or just visiting someone else's school. And if you're not quite at that point yet where you're teaching, I'm going to give you some tips on how to learn better from those folks that maybe aren't the best at teaching in that kind of an environment. Who am I? My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm the host here on Martial Arts Radio. I'm also the founder here at Whistlekick. You can check out all the great stuff we've got going at whistlekick.com. You can check out the show notes for this or any of the other 178 episodes we have at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Everything on that Martial Arts Radio website is free. Why do we do this? Because we want to help promote the martial arts. We want to grow this wonderful thing that we're doing. And we hope that maybe sometime along the line, you'll give one of our products a try. That's really how simple it is. So why are we talking about this subject? Because over the weekend, I had an amazing opportunity training at Master Terry Dow's symposium, martial arts symposium in Manchester, New Hampshire, and it was phenomenal. I've been to a number of seminar series over the years, and this one was as good as any of the others. What was a lot of fun for me was quite a few of the guests on the show that I had not met before were there. And I'm not going to go in and name names because I don't want to leave anybody out. There were that many people here that you've heard from if you've been a fan of the show for a while or if you've gone back and listened to some of the past episodes. There will be some photos coming out. There will be some video, yes, video coming out. And we've got a couple exciting things that came out of the weekend that you'll want to stick. I don't want to say stick around because it's not happening at the end of this episode, but stay tuned for. If you aren't up on what's going on, maybe this is your new, your first episode or something, you can follow what we're doing by signing up for the newsletter. You can do that at whistlekick.com or whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. I think that's a good enough intro. Let's move forward. Teaching at seminars. One of the things that's challenging for me as someone, I'll be honest, there are a lot of things I don't consider myself to be great at. Teaching is one of the things that I think I've got a pretty good handle on. So when I work with people that I know have a ton of knowledge and they struggle to pass that knowledge on, I get frustrated. And that's really the motivation for today's episode is I'm hoping that some of this information helps other people so we can become better teachers and people learn more stuff. The first step is to remember why you're teaching. And that sounds pretty simplistic, doesn't it? You're teaching because you're trying to pass on knowledge. Well, unfortunately... Not everyone who teaches at a seminar or, let's be honest, there are other ways that this information is going to be relevant. If you're someone that visits other martial arts schools to teach or you're teaching a self-defense course to people that don't train in the martial arts, really it's anybody that is not your student consistently. That's who this advice is is targeted for and, and the situation that I'm looking to talk about. Step one, remember why you're teaching them. You're not teaching them for your own ego. If you've been invited to teach at a seminar and it makes you feel good about yourself and you're going to go in there and show everybody how great you are and how much you know, you might as well stop because you're not going to do a good job and people will actually think less of you if that's what you're going in to do. Unfortunately, not everyone realizes that that's their motivation. And those of us that have been to a number of seminars have worked with somebody, most likely, that that's why they're there. They want to show everybody how much they know. Well, I don't want to see how much you know. Nobody else wants to see how much you know. It's not a demonstration. It's an educational format. So you've got to let that ego point go. Your goal, your purpose, rather, is to impart knowledge, to teach And your success or failure is based entirely on how much knowledge you pass on and how skilled your students are at repeating that information. Whether or not they choose to continue to work with it, that's their choice. But by the end of your time with them, they should be able to remember and work with everything you demonstrated to them. If not, unfortunately, that's on you. The next point is to set a goal. If you've got an hour with a group of people that could be from various styles, various ranks, and you don't know their background, you're going to have to be 
pretty simplistic. You're going to have to look at a different angle to teach something rather than something entirely new. You're probably not going to teach them a form. You're probably not going to teach them a brand new weapon. You're probably not going to teach them anything that would excite you as advanced material. You've got to find something that you can impart that maybe it's not new. It doesn't have to be new, but it should be cohesive and something that they're going to be able to dovetail into what they already know. You may be out there saying, well, you know, Jeremy, what if what if the thing that I'm teaching somebody out there already knows? First off, they don't know it from you. They don't know it your way. Just as your martial arts instructor didn't teach you something once and leave, it is valuable for the, to have that repetition, especially from different people. I can't tell you how many martial arts instructors have told me, thank you for teaching that. I've been trying to get so-and-so to do this thing that you just taught them for the last five years. Finally, a different person with a different method, with some different language, was able to break through. You could be that person. I mentioned the next important point already, repetition. You are not doing anyone service to show them something and have them do it once before you move on. In fact, the key to teaching students that are not consistently your own students is repetition. You want to illustrate a concept, demonstrate it, ideally have them do it with you, turn them loose, or maybe you count through their repetitions. Five, 10 times, however you do it. It doesn't necessarily matter as long as they're grasping it because you should be teaching a very simple concept and stacking those concepts up. So you've got to have a plan when you go in. You can't just walk in and say, I'm going to teach people kicks and see what happens. Unless you're an incredible instructor and a veteran of teaching these kind of formats, you can kind of go with the flow and see what people are needing. Most of the time, you've got to go in with a game plan. I'm going to teach them this basic concept. I'm going to have them do it. Then I'm going to teach this adaptation of that concept or this intermediate concept that stacks on top of the basic concept. And you repeat that over and over again. And by the end of 30 minutes or an hour, you can teach a lot of wonderful material to people. All too often, what happens, unfortunately, is people will teach and they'll kind of get bored. They'll Maybe not they're bored, they're afraid that the people training are getting bored. So they'll throw more and more advanced concepts at them. Oh, okay, you just did that three times, let's move on. No, no, that doesn't help anybody. Because 45 minutes in, when they've missed the fundamental concept in the first thing you taught, nothing that you've taught is going to be of value because it, the base, the foundation isn't stable enough. The concept falls over. Just as with a house, you spend a lot of your time making sure that foundation is straight and stable and, and well reinforced. In fact, I would say most of your time should go into that initial piece, kind of like a pyramid. We all know that people learn differently. Some people learn audibly with sound. Some people learn visually by watching a demonstration. Most people, it seems at least in martial arts, learn best by doing. That's why we have martial arts classes, not martial arts lectures. And I think that this fact works well into the education at this type of an environment. Describe the concept you're going to teach. Demonstrate the concept maybe in a couple different ways, ideally facing different directions. That's something that a lot of instructors miss, especially if the students learning from you are in a circle around you and you constantly face the same direction. The people on various angles are missing things. Demonstrate it three or four times. Show them different things. Explain to them while you're doing it what you are doing. Then have them line up in some fashion so they can follow you and you can do it with them a few times. Go very slow. Describe what you're doing. Then, only then, do you turn them loose to practice it on their own, whether you're counting them through it or you've given them a bit of time to work through it. With that format, you get the audible learner, the visual learner, and the tactile learner. 
one of the things that pops up at seminars is you get somebody who asks a lot of questions and maybe they're questions that aren't relevant to what you're teaching or they're just going to take you down a rabbit hole and detract from everybody else's learning. How would you handle that in your own class? Don't worry about that right now. Let's talk about it later. Or that's beyond the scope of what I'm teaching. Or come find me later on after dinner at the bar, whatever. We can talk about it. Or even here's my email address. The last thing you want to do is spend all of your time working with one person who is struggling at the expense of everyone else. And that doesn't just go for questions. That could go for the actual physical instruction. There may be someone that their learning style just doesn't jive with your teaching style. Everybody else is getting it. Everybody else is ready to move on. But one person out of 10, 20 isn't getting it. Unfortunately, you can't teach to that person there. You got to let them flounder. You have to let them do the best that they can because you're doing the best that you can. And you don't want to sacrifice everyone else's education for that one person. Again, you wouldn't do that or you shouldn't at least be doing that in your own school if you have a school. If you want to make sure that you're invited to return or maybe you're trying to build a business or part of your business around teaching seminars, honestly, whether it's martial arts or anything else, if you're teaching, the keys to making sure that you are invited to return or you get word of mouth referrals is making sure that people learn and they have fun. It's those two components. If you're a very dry, let's face it, boring instructor, people don't want to learn that. If you're a very fun, dynamic instructor, people struggle to learn from you, that's not going to help either. People want to be entertained while they are learning. And a seminar is a great place to find people that do that. If you're looking to break into seminar instruction, the best thing you can do is go to other area martial arts schools and and just be very honest with them. I have some things that I'm looking to teach. Can I take one of your classes and teach your folks my stuff? It's free. Well, most instructors are going to be at least open to that and will have a conversation with you, especially if it's something that they don't know well, so you can teach them. The best way to become a better teacher is to teach. And here is the piece that I think gets lost on so many higher ranks who spend all their time teaching. You also become a better teacher by learning as a student. Most of you out there listening are employees at your job, and you've probably felt at some job somewhere along the line that your your boss has forgotten what it's like to be an employee. Same thing. So many martial arts instructors have spent decades as instructors and very little time as a student that they've forgotten what it's like to be a student. So they get out there, they're teaching other people, and they're used to their own students who they've spent years, maybe decades working with, and they can become frustrated because people aren't picking things up that they're teaching in two minutes. I said the key was repetition, so I'm going to go back over the high points. Throw away your ego. Remember, you are there to impart knowledge. If you are there to teach as a selfish act, you're probably not going to be a very good instructor. Set goals for your classes. What are you hoping that they come away with? Make sure there's a lot of repetition. Most of the time should be spent with the students doing, not you talking. There are different methods of learning and you want to accommodate all of them. You want to tell them what they're doing. You want to explain to them why. You want to demonstrate it to them and you want to have them do it. If you have the time and you have the confidence and the type of group that can handle it, have some of them demonstrate it. Have some of them explain it back. Socratic method, right? Teaching by asking questions. If you've got somebody in your class that's asking a lot of questions, too many questions, and pulling time away from the others, don't be afraid to shut them down in a nice way and give them the opportunity to get the answers they're looking for a little bit later on. Same thing if someone physically is not able to do or get the concepts that you're trying to illustrate. Make sure everybody has fun. If they're having fun, they're going to learn more. Remember, kids, especially, this is where we see it the most. Children learn best when they're entertained, when they're engaged. 
That doesn't stop when someone turns 14 or 18 or 25 or any particular age. If the people you are teaching are having fun, they will learn more. And that means you're more likely to be invited back, to gain referrals, whatever it is. Overall, it's a better way to teach. I want to thank you for tuning in, hearing me ramble a little bit. Hopefully, it wasn't too boring. Hopefully, I followed my own advice and you came away with something out of this. If you're looking for some seminars to take, or maybe you've got some coming up that you want to encourage others to go to, don't forget martialartscalendar.com. We're pushing that hard. It keeps growing. I think we just added something like 50 or 60 new events over there in the last week. Absolutely awesome. Loving the way people are embracing this. So thank you. And it's free. Don't forget it's free. If you want to check out the show notes, We've got some bullet points, the outline of today's episode over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, all the other episodes. We've got the products we make at whistlekick.com. Be back soon. Until next time, train hard, smile, have a great day.